Okay, I'm just going to record the short little video here for uh, to discuss the lab since we have a problem, I guess, with the with two parts here. One is the lab video is not working correctly, and the other is that uh, the textbook is missing in action for most of us up there. So first off, let's look at the lab right there, which we're going to kind of go through the procedure here. Now let me just kind of go, th go through it a little bit here. First off, we're using the ESOC board. I don't have my ESOC board with me. It's actually over in the other office, but that's okay. Um, there, ninety percent of this is actually just using the software and then downloading the board. I'll talk about that here in a few minutes. There, so let's go through the steps. This is what the ESOC board looks like here. There should be, and I'll post it later on the uh, if it is not there, ESOC user's manual that gives all the all the pins and everything for this board right there. So as we look at this board here, we'll, we're, we're only using the LEDs and the switches for this particular board right there. So and hopefully this is the right manual. They've had various, various generations of this board, but here we'll, we'll find out when we look at the selector switches and see whether or not those are the right pins as we look at the lab. So, all right, let's go through and look at the lab right here. And it uses the Cordis software. Let me go ahead and bring Cordis up. And I'm running Windows 10, as you can see. And, and look at Altera. Cordis should be, okay, it should be under the Altera. Ah, here, folder right there. Cordis. And, and when you we run the Cordis, make sure you are running the correct version of Cordis. The newer versions do not support the simulator. So here we wait for it. Should be running version 9.1 Web Edition. And I'm going to go ahead and start a new project. And I don't have internet where I'm recording this here. So let's just go ahead and do a do a new project right here new project wizard here and I normally keep my files under the design directory and let's just create a new folder right there for it and I'm going to call this ECET 230 lab 1 and right there. And that's our directory that we're going to be using. And the name of this project is going to be ECET 230 Lab 1. Right there. Next. We're not going to add any files to this yet. We'll, we'll do the files later. And this may be a little different than the way that the lab instructions do it this the way that I typically do it. Next, we're going to have to pick the part, and this is a Cyclone 3 part, as I recall. And they give us the, the part number right there. It's a Cyclone 3 uh, C116Q240C. Well, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to Right there. Oh, wrong one. Let's go through and do this again. Tag that over and oh, it won't let me do the cordis. Evidently, that's going to be so. That's a cyclone three. We'll just have to go back and forth there. 316Q. Let's see, 16Q. It should be down here. I'll go for 16Q right here. And that looks like it's the only one. 240C8. Let's see whether that's right. 240C8. That's our right part there. Okay. So that's the right part. 
So next, right there. And at this point, we can just finish it right there. So, okay. Now we've got, got the part selected. Now we're going to go ahead and create a new VHDL file. And the file information is given right here. And I don't think we can cut and paste this right here. And it brings up the window right here. Now, it'd be nice if we could cut and paste this, but I'm going to move this over here and move it over here. This time, let me do that. So I can just simply copy this over real, real quick. Get that there. So, entity T. And I'm going to go against the lab here simply because Quartus likes to see the top level name as the project name be the same. They use test one. I've got so many test ones that I'm using the, the, that there. So I'm going to call this ECT230L1. Right there. Is. Right there. Port. And capitalization doesn't matter. A. B, C, D, those are all inputs, and they're bits, right there, and then Y1 and Y2 are outputs, and they're also bits, right there, right there, we got to get that in the right order, and, and, ECT 230L1 right there and then architecture we define what's inside this right here architecture is a keyword there. so go blue circuit actually I'm going to, I usually use behavior but there of ECET 230L1. Now these three names have to match. This one has to match this, has to match this, has to match this. Right there is. And what we're defining here is the behavior of the circuit. That's why I use the word behavior instead of circuit, but we could you could use any name you want. Begin. And we're just gonna say Y1 receives the value of right there a and b right there y2 receives the value of a and b or c and i'm going to draw that circuit here in a minute or B and C and not D right there. Close that bracket, make sure we've got the whole line there. Yep. And we put a semicolon at the end of that there. Looks like I'm missing a bracket here somewhere. Because this these two go to here. Oh, I'm going to see a bracket here. Right there. Yeah. No, I'm still missing a bracket. A and B or C. Should be two brackets there. Or B and C and not D. Okay. That looks right. That there. Let's see what... A and B or C or B and C and not D that there all right now what this circuit looks like and I'm going to bring up my one note hopefully it works fine here and just to show you what this circuit looks like uh, quick, open, open one note
here. And let's bring that there. And the first one, of course, is Y1. Okay, the first one is just simply an AND gate, A, B, and Y, 1, right there. That's simply a, a, a theory. The second one's a little bit more complicated because we've got an AND gate, the two inputs. One is A, and the other is B, C, going through an OR gate, right there. Up there, and then we've got another AND gate right here. That B, I'm just going to write B, C here, and then we've got not D, uh, an inverter here, and D going through here, and then this all goes through an OR gate right there. I didn't show all the connections in there, but that's what we've got here. So this here is true if B, C, and not D up there, and I'll leave that for an exercise for you to come up with the truth table, but we will see what the truth table looks like for that there. But again, we're looking here, this, this is, and this is supposed to be an, an OR gate right there. Right there. This is supposed to be an OR gate right here. A, B, and C right there. So that's what we've got. That's what our circuit looks like there. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. And then we'll finish this up here. And behavior right there. And that's our simple circuit right there. You know, at this point, we, we could go ahead. We're going to go ahead and save this. And it's going to default to the project name and add it to the current project, which is what we want it to do. And then we're going to compile it. And hopefully we, it compiles cleanly if we didn't make any mistakes. Right there. And it does look like it compiled cleanly right there. We got lots of warnings. We'll look at the warnings here real quick. The, the warnings basically come back to feature lock is only available if we pay for the software. We have not assigned the I.O. pins yet. Right there. There and we so we've got six pins. We have not assigned them yet. So we don't have the constraints file, which we don't need. We don't have any clocks in this here. And right there. So so it's got that there. So, so it compiled fine. We're in good shape here. Now, our next step is to go through, and let me look back at the lab here, right here, is to simulate this. Now, I simulated a little bit differently, but I'm going to go through and do the simulation right here. We're going to create a new, create a new file, and this is our vector waveform file right there. And this is where we do our simulation now. I don't know if the lab talks about it. Let me look at the lab again real quick. Right here. Uh, simulation. Four microseconds. Does it say anything? And our value for the period. Okay. Two microseconds. All right. That's there. So they do. It does adjust the period. I do it a little bit differently. It, we could, you can follow the lab or you can follow this technique. It doesn't really matter. But again, the grid size is, yeah, this is what we're looking for right here. This is what we, we want to do it's right here is we want to edit the grid size so that it looks so. Our grid size is going to be one microsecond, and we're going to do this for 10 microseconds. I'm actually going to do it for 20 microseconds because I'm going to simulate both circuits at the same time. So let's go ahead and edit the end time, and let's do that for 20. You can make it 25 right there. 
and edit the grid size. And we're going to make that one microsecond right there. And actually, you know, our end time needs to be larger than that. I'm going to make that 50. It may be too long. It doesn't matter. If, it, if it's too long, it's no problem. Now we're going to go ahead and enter our nodes right there. And we're going to use Node Finder. And I just set the pins all and list them. There's our six pins, and we just move them over. Now, I cheat right here because I group these right here. I pick those four, and I'm going to group those right there. And I'm going to descending, and you'll see the reason I do that right there. And let, let me look at the lab real quick before I go any further right here. Oh, wrong one. Right there is that they they said this is A. All right, they make they're making A the least significant and B the most significant or D the most significant. So I guess I don't want to do that right there. Bit order. Let me change that right there. A B C D and group or group right there. And let's group that and do this as binary. Oh, and inputs right there. It looks like this right here. And then group order, our least significant is on top, which actually it's going to be D in this case. I should have left them. That there it does doesn't really matter you're gonna get the, the same results I'm gonna leave it this way right here uh, group order be significant on top all right D is our is our least significant bit that's normally the way that we do that that's there so now the reason I did that is I'm just going to go through here and I'm going to set this as a value and just do a count value right here and the reason I did that is because, oh, here we go. And you can see it takes us a 16 microseconds to get a full period right there. So there's our inputs right there. And if we reverse, if we ungroup this, group, ungroup this, and then just That there, that should look very much like the lab here for A and B. Now I went ahead and did D at the same time because as you go through and follow the lab, that there you're supposed to it's incomplete because only one condition is, you know. So part ten is you're supposed to modify to include. So I did that, did part eleven there as well. So I'm actually doing the the full lab at this point here. If you follow follow the lab that there. It's just easier. So again, we just save this file. It's a vector waveform file we had in the current project. It all has the same name. And then we simulate it. The simulation button is right here. And and I will leave it for you to go through and verify the simulation to see whether or not it does match the truth table right there so now we've done the simulation now it's time to assign the pins so we do our pin assignments before I do that the lab leaves this out but this is a good idea to do is I normally set my unused pins well these are input with weak pull up okay so input try so 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 they are set up correctly so we don't need to do that so now what we're going to do is we're going to assign our pins right there and here's our pins right here and I'm going to bring up the lab again right here and you'll see that the pins right here and these pins look different than the ones in that manual that I've got right you look at that manual right there this may this may be an older manual 
which that there. Yeah, this is a much older manual. This is used in the 7000 series. So don't use this manual. I won't post this manual. Use these pins here. And we can see our pins are, we just go over here and we just type 99, enter, 88, enter, 87, enter, 86, enter. Now these are our two LEDs, 69 and 66. There's that 68, I mean 68, right there. That assigns our pins to on our board to where they're supposed to be. Because that will assign to, if you look at our board here, you have our switches and our LEDs right there. And you out there, so and this doesn't user's guide from the the shown for figure user's guide from our computer systems. I don't have that user's guide with me right there, supplied with the board. It should have should have been with your board. I can't find mine for whatever reason, which is perfectly fine. I've got the you know the, the pins assignments are here. So at this point we close this. And we're almost done with the lab here. We have to now we we have to recompile it one more time after we assign the pins there, and we should get far fewer error or warnings there. We got four warnings, it looks like, and we'll go through the warnings again. Eight warnings that there, and the the warnings. Are so have complete refer to the warnings. Oh, okay, why do we have incomplete I/O assignments? No clocks. That one's set there. No clocks. And refer to I/O assignment warnings for details. Right there. It may be a situation. Okay, this, that just simply, those warnings are, are, are we, we can ignore those warnings. That just simply says we haven't specified in our constraints file how much drive we need in the slew rate for those, um, you know, how much current's going to be drawn so that the timing can, can actually calculate that there. So at this point, what you would do then is go through and you would design the board or download this board. Now there's one last part of this lab, which you're missing. And, you know, this goes through all the timing at their clock applied. This is what we initial simulations right there. Again, this is showing the pin assignments at their programming the board. Follow the steps. I did put up another video on installing the, the driver for this board that was that's in the question and answer part of the lab on getting the driver installed properly for the board now the design project goes to the textbook and actually these page numbers don't correspond with the textbook that I have from the older one but this basically is a straightforward circuit that simply looks for a majority of two or three inputs, the output is going to be high. So let me just bring back up my OneNote right there. And I don't want this one. Let me go back to right here. And right there. And all this is saying, and let me turn my computer around a second here. I've got a tablet and I want to write on the screen, is that we've got three inputs, A, B, C, right here. And our output, I'm going to call M, right here, 0, 0, 0. I'm giving you the truth table, and you have to come up with the design. Right here at one one zero. 
in one 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 right there one two three four five six seven eight I got them all this one is supposed to be up there and what we're saying is the output is going to be high if two or more of the inputs are high so this is zero this is zero this is zero this is a one this is a zero this is a one this is a one this is a one so our if we just read the truth table it's going to be a dot b c or a b not c or a b c not or a b c equals m now you can just go ahead and use this equation in the problem or you can simplify that it doesn't make any difference as it turns out with the Altera because if you don't simplify it the software is going to put it into a lookup table but that's your design problem right there is to come up with that type of circuit right there with that said I'm going to go ahead and stop this right there again this is not connected to the internet so I'm going to go ahead and stop this